Today we're going to take a look at the revolution of 1800 and if you clicked on this this video and you were thinking man I can't wait to learn about some revolution um, one thing you need to keep in mind is, is the fact that it was not an actual revolution there are not going to be any crazy epic battles like we had during the American Revolution at Bunker Hill there's not going to be any heads chopped off as we saw during the French Revolution in fact this revolution quote unquote was not an actual revolution now before you click exit it was a significant moment for the young nation and it's extremely important that you understand why and keep in mind in the early period in our history we had two political parties the Federalist versus the Democratic Republican and these two political parties were forming throughout the 1790s under the administrations of George Washington and later John Adams. And they're forming because they're disagreeing about a whole bunch of issues from the Assumption Plan to the National Bank to the role of the new federal government to just the conduct of the young nation's foreign policy. These things, these issues, economic policies, relationship between the feds and the states, all of this had caused divisions which ultimately turned into those two political parties. Now, something to keep in mind about the Federalists. Remember when George Washington was elected in 1789, he's elected unanimously. And he takes a second term and he walks away after two terms, setting that very important precedent. And John Adams is elected in 1796. However, the Federalists are not doing so well. In fact, there was trouble with regard to the situation in Europe with the French Revolution and France's war with the other European monarchs. You know, after the XYZ affair, there were a lot of Americans who wanted to go to war with France. They built up the Navy, they increased taxes, and all of those kind of controversies uh, were dividing the nation. The Federalists were also not doing very well because Adams and the Federalist-controlled Congress supported a very controversial law, the Alien and Sedition Acts. And many people saw this law as proof that the federal government was abusing its power under the Adams administration. And basically, by 1800, they were out of touch with a lot of kind of ordinary voters. And so Adams' presidency is, is, is not very popular. Now, even more so than the popularity of this young man in high school. Look at these glasses. If you want to think about unpopular, think of that image. Now back to the lecture. 1800, it's a rematch. Everyone loves rematches because we have John Adams who won in 1796. He's running for a second term and he's running against your boy, Vice President. What? Vice President Thomas Jefferson. See, the, the framers of the Constitution didn't anticipate these political parties, and so whoever got the second most electoral votes became vice president. Now, that doesn't work if you have different political parties, which was the case in 1796 when that election took place. So in 1800, you got the VP running against the president. Now, keep in mind some things about Thomas Jefferson you may not know. He was a member of the secretary, uh, he was the secretary of state under George Washington. He resigns. He was the leader of the opposition to the Federalist policies, especially Hamilton's economic programs, the bank, for example. And he also was the author of the Kentucky Resolution. Remember, there was those Virginia and Kentucky resolutions. James Madison wrote the Virginia one unanimously, and Jefferson wrote the Kentucky one, and they basically said state rights. If the federal government does something that we feel they don't have the right to do, if they are acting unconstitutionally, we will nullify, we will ignore that law within the state of Kentucky or Virginia. Now, Jefferson's the key figure, and in 1800, the election takes place. And a guy who plays a very key role is this guy right here, Mr. Aaron Burr, because he delivers a very important state to Jefferson. The Democratic Republican Party was really popular in the South and the West, especially amongst farmers. Federalists had their strength in the cities and the coastal cities areas. Burr gets New York for Jefferson. 
and it's a really close election, but because of New York voting for Jefferson, those electoral votes turn it in Jefferson's favors. The Democratic Party wins. Now, actually, it's a tie between Jefferson and Aaron Burr. They both get the same number of electoral votes. And under the Constitution, that means the election goes to the House of Reps. And the House of Reps is dominated by the Federalists, including a guy who works behind the scenes, Alexander Hamilton, to help give Jefferson the presidency. They seem to think that he would be a better president, a more moderate or willing to work with type president than Aaron Burr. Keep that in mind when Aaron Burr shoots Alexander Hamilton later on. Now, why is it referred to as the Revolution of 1800? We haven't killed anyone. There's been nothing that typically pops up when we think of revolution. And the reality is the big idea is this. When I was talking to Jefferson, he told me two things. One, it's the peaceful and orderly transfer of power between political parties. The young nation worked. It actually... The people accepted the results. The Federalist Party relinquished office. They transferred political party. And the young nation is able to do so. The Constitution was working. And one political party takes office for the very first time. The second reason, and this is really Jefferson. He's the one who calls it the Revolution of 1800. Is he believed that his victory in 1800 returned to the original spirit of 1776. That the election of the Jeffersonian Democratic Party showed that the Republican experiment, the Republicanism and democracy, this experiment that America was doing, that we were returning to those roots which we fought for in 1776 during the American Revolution. So you have this peaceful transfer of power. In fact, when Jefferson gives his inaugural address, he says, we are all Republicans, we are all Federalists, kind of bridging this gap well, let's work together. Peaceful opposition. We could oppose one another, but we are one nation. All right, that's going to do it for today. Hopefully you learned something about the revolution of 1800. If you like the video, click that button that shows you care. Hit that thumbs up button. And if you haven't already done so, subscribe to the channel. Tell your friends. Tell your grandparents. They're probably sitting at home. Get Let them get their learn on by subscribing to Joe's Productions and getting them on the internets. And uh, as always, peace out.